Is it time to upgrade your family home? Is the current home feeling a bit small, a bit tired? Is it time to move on? Today, Kristen and I, Marissa, we're here to help you understand your options to make this happen and talk about the sort of things that you need to consider. Thanks for joining me, Kristen. My pleasure. <laughs> Kristen's one of our most experienced mortgage workers at Rise High and she has helped thousands of Australians to upgrade their family homes. So we'll share a wealth of knowledge with us today. So Kristen, what is the first thing that people need to think about and get their ducks, you know, how do they get their ducks in a row if they are thinking about upgrading their family home? What's the first things they need to consider? Look, I think if you're feeling like you're starting to outgrow your home or just looking for that, that change in location maybe, probably the first thing to do is to make sure you've got a team of experts around you that can guide you throughout this journey. So making an appointment with your Rise High broker, undertaking a bit of a financial fitness kind of health check and um, you know, early on seeing if you can find opportunities in there to improve your financial position. So that may be getting rid of some credit cards that you don't use um, or potentially looking at ways of reducing your expenses. You know, there's little things you can do in those early days of going through the process. But then I guess the key thing is sitting down with your broker and working out what it is that you can actually afford. Mm. So that's in terms of your repayments, your deposit. So that's either made up of savings or equity that you've got in your existing home. But before you start looking for that, you know, next perfect property, understanding how much you can borrow is definitely a key part of the process. And in part of doing that uh, review, you do you often find that you can identify ways that your uh, clients can actually improve their borrowing capacity and improve their financial position so that potentially what is possible right now um, can be expanded to something, you know, more than what, what they're currently capable of. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why it's really important to have those discussions early on, rather than coming to us and saying, oh, realestate.com found the perfect property, I want it. You know, we're not in a position to make all those little tweaks and changes in the background and help you understand how much you can borrow and, and what's the option for you. Yeah, of course we can help if there is absolutely. that last minute property that you love, but definitely it is better if it's planned a bit more strategically thought through and you know that there's time involved yeah, so absolutely. yeah that's great yeah. um so if you know once someone has come and spoken to you about this and done that initial financial review what are the options that families generally have or people don't generally have in terms of upgrading can we just talk through what are the options i believe there's five main options sure yeah absolutely so there are five main options and all of them have I guess their pros and cons attached to them, whether it's from um, a financial standpoint or actually the practicality. You know, if you're moving kids and a dog and, and all the rest, you know, mm. all of your furniture, it's the actual practical side of it as well. So some of the options are easier, you know, from a financial standpoint and others are easier from a practical moving standpoint. Yes. So really the option with least financial risk is to sell your existing home first and then buy something new. That basically means you know exactly how much money you've got as your deposit, how yeah. much you've got to play with to put towards that new property. The downside of this is if you're unable to line up the sale and the purchase of the new property, um, whether that's through an extended settlement time frame or whether there's just not the right property on the market that you're yeah. looking for, Sometimes that can be a bit of a mismatch in timing. So you've sold, you haven't found the new property yet. Where are you going to live in the meantime? That's right. And, and these days, you know, rental can be hard. So you need to make sure that's lined up. Even if you can align the date of settlement of the house that you're selling and the house that you're buying to exactly the same date, that can sometimes have some complications too. Um, what you know? What advice do you give to people that are having that settlement day on the same day, Kristen? How risky is it that that won't come to fruition on both sides? And what happens if it doesn't? You know, what what have you seen in that scenario? Yeah. So look, it is a risk, but I guess there are if you've got the right team around you, there are yeah. ways to negate this risk. It actually happened to me when I upgraded my last family home, had a simultaneous settlement. One of them fell through for a reason out of our control. Um, and there's definitely things that between the agent, the conveyancer and your broker, we can help you to either reduce that risk or 
um, you know, negate that, that period in between the two settlements happening on the same day. Great, so option number one is to sell your existing home and have that finalised before you actually proceed to buy a new home. What's option number two? So option number two, and this is potentially something that you would look at as you're crunching the numbers and going through the process, is exploring the option of keeping your existing property and turning it into an investment property. So it's a great way to build wealth, it's a great way to start your property investing journey because you're familiar with that initial property. Um, and that can definitely be, you know, if you're in a financial position to do so, can be quite an easy transition then because you can move into your new property and be ready to have tenants to move into your existing property and that whole process can be a little bit easier. So don't write off that option. Yes. And sometimes I say to clients, even if you feel like it's gonna be a stretch to start with, let's make it happen that way. And you've always got the option down the track to sell that property if you're feeling like your finances are a little bit too tight. Absolutely, and, and this would definitely be my favourite option out Absolutely. of all the options available. And if it isn't, if it is available option to you, it's definitely something you should consider. I find that you can actually, uh, you know, when people are deciding whether they can afford to keep it as an investment property, they're forgetting to uh, take into consideration the additional rental income that they're going to get for the property and the additional tax benefits that they're yeah. going to get for the rental property so you know often people might come to you you know do you find that people come to you and they think they can't afford it but actually after they've gone through all the numbers and worked it all out actually it is possible for them yeah you know, absolutely is that something it, that happens often it is quite common and yeah. like I said even if even if my clients feel like it may be a bit of a stretch to start with you've always got that little get out of jail free card in that you can sell the property if it's not working for you, yeah. if it's too much of a squeeze. But the actual process then of buying and selling becomes a lot smoother as well. Absolutely, and you've got the added bonus of having an investment and a passive income that is gonna support you later on in life in your retirement, which is a big bonus. Just a bit of a tax tip with this, if you are planning that that might be an option that you'd like to consider in the future, and you're currently putting additional repayments into your mortgage, maybe it's better to put the additional repayments into your offset so that you can keep that home loan as high as possible. Is that something that you talk about with your clients, Kristen? Yeah, what advice absolutely, do you give them around absolutely. that? Absolutely, and look, we've got a great little video, which I'm sure we can provide the link to, that explains the difference between an offset and paying extra into your home loan and the tax benefits of each. So I really encourage you to have a look at that video if that's something you're thinking of doing and it explains the difference between the two options. And I think even if you're not planning to upgrade right now, but maybe it's something that you're thinking about in the future, in coming months or years, it is good to get your ducks in a row early. So watching that video about where to put your extra, extra funds, whether it's in the offset or redraw, can actually really set you up for success down the track Absolutely. and open your options as well. So um, being as prepared as you can be. So that's option number two. We've got a few shout outs. Hi Millie, Adri, Tharaka, Brian, Monique, Sarah, Shane, Sean. Thank you so much for joining us guys. We are live with you today. So if you have any questions or comments, please send them through. We'd love to interact with you live. Uh, let's talk about option number two for upgrading your home, Kristen. What's, uh, sorry, option number, option three. number three. Let's talk about yeah. option number three for upgrading your home. Uh, what's option number three? So option number three is actually making an offer on a new property and putting a condition in there that your offer is subject to the sale of your existing home. Yeah. So look, that can work really well if the people you're buying a property off are happy to accept those terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. Um, it may put a little bit of a restriction on you in terms of time frames yes. and put that pressure on you to sell your existing property. So you really want your existing property ready to put on the market, ready yes. to take those real estate photos and ready to start advertising straight away. But I guess the downside of this option is that a lot of people who are selling their property, if they have an offer that's subject to sale and an offer that's not subject to sale and they're for pretty much the same amount, yeah. generally speaking, they're gonna go for the offer that doesn't have that condition placed on the contract. So yes. it's, it's worth considering, it's worth talking to the agent you know, for the property that you're buying um, but can sometimes put a little bit of, of pressure on the situation and maybe not, you know, you're not as likely 
um, your offer's not as likely to be accepted. And I find that this option uh, works better in some market conditions than others. So it really depends what's going on with demand and supply Absolutely. from buyers and sellers as to how likely the agent and the vendor is going to be to accept an offer subject to per, you know, subject to sale. But I, I think what you said is, you know, you've hit the nail on the head with um, it does make you a little bit less appealing as mm. a purchaser, which means that you probably have to offer more money. Yeah. You know, if you didn't have to put that condition, you could probably buy the property for less. But having to add that condition means you might actually be paying a bit more of a premium for the property you're buying. So that's just something to think about. But I guess the flip side of that is you're getting the um, you're getting the confidence that you don't have to proceed with the purchase if you can't sell your current house for what you want to sell it for. So yeah. you sort of take the good with the bad, the pros and the cons. Yeah. So option number three was to make an offer of subject to sale of your existing home, which means that you can give yourself time to sell your existing home before you have to proceed with the purchase of the home that you want to purchase. What's option number four, Kristen? So option number four is often um, spoken about and it's called a bridging loan. Hmm. So a bridging loan is basically short-term finance that covers the gap between you purchasing the new property and actually selling your existing home. So I guess the things to remember with bridging loan, and look, this is the first thing people always come to me. They say, I need to buy a new house, I need a bridging loan. They don't understand that there are other options out there. Yes. But often when we sit down and break down how a bridging loan actually works, you need to remember that they can be quite expensive. Yes. So the interest rates are traditionally significantly higher and there are additional fees involved. Um, and it doesn't work for every single person's financial situation. You do need to have quite a lot of equity in your existing home. But I guess the thing to take away here is don't write it off and that's why you've got a mortgage broker to sit down and crunch the numbers, explain to you you know, the costs and the benefits of going down this path. And if it is an option that's available to you, well, we can help you get a pre-approval and get that set up. And sometimes it can be the best option available. Absolutely. You know, and a great way to give you, you know, tick all of the boxes in terms of making that move, transition easier, um, making sure that everything falls in line with the timing that you need to follow. So. Like we said, you know, all of these options have pros and cons. Absolutely. It's about weighing them up for your personal situation yeah. to work out what's the best thing for you. Uh, what is the fifth option that you see people choose when it comes to upgrading their family home, Kristen? So I guess when we say upgrade, it doesn't necessarily mean buying a brand new home. Hmm. It can mean renovating or extending your property adding an extra bathroom if that's why you're looking to upgrade or potentially building upstairs so you've got more space for the family home. Yep. So this is definitely something that, you know, especially if you love the area that you live in, you've got yes. great neighbours, it's, you know, it may be something worth exploring. Um, ultimately, we can either use the equity that you've got in your property or if you're doing quite an extensive upgrade, what the banks will do once we've actually got a build contract um, that you know, lays out all of the terms and conditions of the build and all of the plans, we can get the bank to value your property on the future value as if you've got that extra bathroom or living space yeah. and help you to fund the build that way based on a higher value of a, a, a finished product. Yeah, and that can be, like Kristen said, a great option if you really love the place, you know, the area that you live, the street that you live, and you just need a facelift for your house or it needs more space, more room. Um, obviously, you need to consider where you're going to live whilst the renovation and extension is happening. You might be able to live in the house, but you might have to live somewhere else in the interim. Um, but what I think you generally find with renovation and extension, it might end up being a cheaper option than actually buying a new home because it means that you don't have to pay the additional stamp duty and the yeah. purchase cost with buying. So you may actually end up with a nicer house you know, specifically designed to your family's needs right where you're currently living. So some great options there, Kristen. Yeah, I think it's important to just remember that there's pros and cons of each and sitting down with your broker, we can talk through, you know, what's gonna suit you best or at least give you the information to go away and make a, make a good decision. 
Absolutely. And once you've chosen the right decision and you've worked out your upgrade option that's going to be best for you, if you do decide that you are going to move into a new home, uh, we can also help to tie up all the loose ends, not only from a banking perspective with all the bank accounts and the repayments and everything like that, but also getting your gas and electricity uh, set up and your insurance and tying up all those loose ends so that you can really focus on the fun stuff of organizing your furniture and hacking and, and moving i don't know if i'd call doing, that fun but. well i think it, i think it's fun when you're sort of settled into yes, your new absolutely. space so yeah it probably is a bit of a stressful process but we'd like to take away as much of the stress as possible in organizing all those little bits and pieces that you might not think about but making sure that the move is as seamless as possible when it comes to your utilities and your finance and all of those sorts of things. Is there anything else that you suggest people do after they make the move or do the upgrade? Is there anything they should do? Should they come back and do another review of where they're at? What, what do you normally suggest at that point? Absolutely, so part of the process once you have moved into that property is we help you do those final checks and balances, making sure that all your repayments are set up correctly. But sometimes I guess, the plan that you have on day one can definitely change throughout the process. Yeah. So just doing that final review as well, making sure that the product suits you, making sure that you know, you've know you got everything set up as you need to going forward. And then um, at Rise High, something that we do for all of our clients is that you know regular ongoing review of your home loan as well, which we offer for free. So yeah. Amazing. Thank Beautiful. you so much, so much knowledge. And we hope this has helped you today. Good luck with your upgrading options and considering what your options are. And of course, the team at Rise High would love to help you. So please come and see us. We can have a chat, talk through the options and how they apply to you and um, help you out with your upgrade options. So thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.